Friday morning, uh, well, it has been a uh, Friday morning special for the last five months or so. We are visiting with uh, Imperial County officials, and we are getting some updates on uh, the COVID-19 situation and a few other things along the way. And today... I guess it's my special day. I'm sure glad I got a haircut. Uh, <laughs> with us this morning, we have Lindsay Dale and uh, Rebecca baxter Torazis. And Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning, Carol. How are you? I am well, thank you. Okay, lots of things going on. And, um, well, first off... When you look at the numbers that the Imperial County Public Health Department is publishing, Imperial County definitely moving in the right direction. Yes. So the, yes. uh, the governor's skittles schedule for reopening the economy, it may be another two or three weeks before the numbers stabilize. We may be able to move to the next step. And one of the things I noticed two weeks out from the Labor Day weekend, we have not seen a spike in uh, COVID-19 cases, apparently. So, good things happening. Okay, ladies, I know you guys have been very, very busy. And, uh, Lindsay, what, what's going on? So, you know, amongst other, everything else, um, we have really focused a lot of efforts recently on um, a binational campaign with the city of Mexicali. Um, we recognize that we are definitely a binational region. Um, you know, COVID knows no borders. COVID knows no um, border crossing or fence or anything like that. Um, so we are all one region here. And to get through this, I think it's very important that we work together um, and in doing so, we have created a binational communications plan um, where we're focusing on messaging that is, um, of course, bilingual and addresses both regions um, for different times. So, for instance, um, this week we released a video um, talking about Mexican Independence Day and how we needed to celebrate a little differently this year um, from home. We are going to be focusing on a lot of different milestone events um, and holidays between now and the first of the year. Um, and we're also doing a big focus on our agricultural workers because we recognize that many of them um, live in Mexicali and work here in our United States. And so we need to definitely put a special emphasis on messaging um, to provide the information and resources needed for those essential workers as well. Okay. So, uh, uh, again, and it is one of the beauties of the Imperial Valley that it is a bicultural experience. So uh, we, we get that part of it. Uh, Becky, I'm sorry, Rebecca, uh, <laughs> what's happening in your world? Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> That's a loaded question. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, as the Intergovernmental Relations Director, I have the pleasure of uh, representing the county with various other governmental entities. But in addition to that, part of my job is working on communications and messaging. So that's why I'm here today to join Lindsay and um, working with her at the Joint Information Center to make sure that we're getting out the information that um, the public um, needs to be aware of. Uh, uh, you know, they all the information, whether if it's related to our numbers and the updates that we send out, or messaging, letting reminding people to still be vigilant on uh, wearing their masks, and you know, if they can stay home, still you know, try to stay home as much as possible. We want to reduce the spread. We want to keep these numbers going in the direction that they're going, as you mentioned earlier, Carol. So that way, we can get to that point where we go to the next skittle color and are able to open up a little more um, because we understand the impact that it's having on our economy. And, um, you know, we're very sympathetic to uh, those direct impacts that many business owners and employees are having right now. Um, but we need to continue to be vigilant. And so I'm working and helping out Lindsay on this end 
uh, in addition to, you know, focusing our, on our county priorities that are still going on at the same time, whether if it's salt and sea or other issues as well, um, working on that hard. Well, w one of the things, you know, let's, let's just get started with, okay, COVID typically right there in the, uh, in the spotlight, but uh, gee, Nyland, you know, lose uh, some 40 structures in Nyland with uh, issues that go along there. Oh, by the way, we've got the regular flu season coming up. Oh, uh, major brush fire north of Raleigh yesterday. Um, oh, I, you know, uh, the city of Mexicali is diverting uh, 4,000 cubic meters of uh, waste into the new river. I, you know, there's just whole bunches of things going on right now, aren't there? Yes, it, it doesn't stop. And just because we're going through this pandemic, you know, the world is still going on and other issues and emergencies are going to happen, unfortunately. And so that's what our job here is at the CEO's office is to work with all of the other departments, um, fire, public health, uh, Ag commissioners, APCD, all of the ones that we have here, social services that are working hard to make sure that we are addressing all of the issues and the needs that our community has. Okay, and by the way, I got my property tax bill, so, uh, you know. <laughs> We're still working, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, hey, you got to have that money coming in to pay all the bills. <laughs> we understand that part of it. Okay, exactly. anything, uh, anything else that we should touch on? You know, we wanted to talk about a little bit about some of the math, the math program that we have going on right now. Um, I think that a lot of people don't don't realize how many masks the County of Imperial has definitely have, has distributed over the last few weeks. Um, we have been working, like we mentioned, with the binational communications plan. There's also been kind of a quiet little plan, or program that's been happening with Mexicali as well. Um, the county received an anonymous donation of a, of a million masks um, that were designated for um, the city of Mexicali and efforts there. Um, we have been distributing those to date. 500,000 have been distributed. Um, they're going to um, areas that are kind of the, 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 the um, high spread areas, uh, can, kind of, as you can say, the public transportation areas, border crossing areas, and then specifically targeting essential farm worker community. Um, so there's that program going on. And then also at the same time, um, the Agricultural Commissioner's Office has distributed over 900,000 um, masks to local agricultural companies, um, farm worker advocacy organizations such as Community Civico, um, California Rural Legal Assistance, Capacino Nidos, and Brown Bag Coalition. Um, and then we've also been working with um, advocacy organizations such as Farm Bureau, um, Pearl Valley Vegetable Growers Association, and CoLab to develop messaging as well, um, targeting our farm worker and, and agricultural community. Because you know, um, produce season is, is here. It's, um, they're starting prep work right now, and um, it will just continue um, in high, high fashion um, through March. And I think what's very important, Carol, is, you know, these are essential workers that we need to make sure to work closely with our partners to do our best to protect. Um, they play a critical role in making sure that we have food on our tables. And so uh, we're doing our best to work with the various individuals. And we, um, I mean, as Lindsay mentioned, we got a million masks donated that we're working to get distributed um, in a binational effort, and that's actually going to be highlighted later this morning as well in a press conference that we will be joining that Assembly Member uh, Eduardo Garcia will be hosting uh, later on this morning. Okay. So uh, things, are, things are continuing to happen, and uh, apparently things are happening in a more positive way than what just a couple of weeks ago. You know, it's always positive. We have to um, remember that um, although this has been extremely devastating um, to so many lives, um, we have to, as a county, um, we have to continue on and we have to um, continue to serve our community and to make sure that Imperial County, as, as our chief Rahota says, remains Imperial County strong and um, continue our work here. 
Okay. Ladies, we appreciate the visit today. And uh, Tony wanted to make sure I asked you, uh, who's your favorite boss? (laughs) Well... (laughs) Is he buying lunch? <laughs> Great answer. And knowing Tony, no. <laughs> He's very generous. He, he will. Okay, ladies, we, we appreciate it. the visit and uh, have a safe weekend. And uh, well, stay healthy. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Carol. Carol. You as well. Thank you, Imperial County. The Imperial Valley, best oldies on the radio. The best music all day. AM 1230 KXO.